Hello, everyone. Do you like your change logs? No? Okay, this wasn't the only question we had for you. Uh, we are in advance very sorry if you want to just digest the uh, lunch, check the emails and do this stuff. Sorry, we have something for you as well. We would like you to be active and help us with the talk. Uh, because there should have been a talk about change logs in the morning, just a regular presentation. It was cancelled, so uh, we need to do this together then. And by that, I mean like all of us. And who? Uh, uh, I'm František, and together with Laura, we are both from the Packet team. And in Packet projects, we are going a lot of things around GitHub, GitLab, releases, and we are interested in how we work with change logs. Okay, so hello, my name is Laura. Uh, today, as Franta already hinted, uh, it will be uh, also about you, and uh, this will be quite interactive. Uh, so you already see a QR code here, uh, but you can also see the code um, in the top. Uh, so we will be using the menti.com. So please uh, try to yeah, you are already answering. Uh, so please try to connect. And we have a first uh, icebreaker question, and it's hopefully very simple. Do you provide change logs in your projects? We are hoping for a lot of blue color. Uh, and while you are uh, connecting and answering the first question, uh, one more note. So um, I did my master thesis about the pain points in the release process, and actually the change log management uh, was um, identified as one of the biggest pain points. Uh, so you will also see some charts here, and uh, they will be uh, all from uh, my master thesis, um, where I was uh, collecting the data from uh, multiple thousand uh, GitHub repositories. Uh, so that's just as for the source of the data. Uh, and I think, I hope that most of you are um, by this time connected. If not, you can still do so. Uh, and yeah, it is, as we were hoping uh, for the blue color, it is mostly yes, so you are right in this place. Uh, so I think we can continue. Um, Yes, yeah, so uh, here we can see the first chart that's from my master thesis. And unfortunately, uh, in a lot of uh, repositories I was collecting the data from, uh, the change log was actually not present, or at least not from like the usual names as change log, news, release notes, etc. So uh, we have a next question, hopefully a little bit more challenging. Uh, so what do you as a user like to see in change logs? Uh, so please be creative, like, uh... <laughs> okay, nice, yeah. it can be words, uh, multiple words. And if you agree, just mention the same thing so it gets bigger and bigger, like the breaking changes. That are... Okay, so breaking changes, pretty popular, new features, sure. Meme memes. Oh. Changes in general, that makes sense. Um, features, yeah, bug fixes. Mm -hmm. If I'm affected, yeah, that, that makes sense. That I want to okay, know. I can see a lot of creative answers. <laughs> yeah, I think the mess starts to show up uh, how this actually works. Okay. Very nice. So uh, actually, you can, uh, like in the end, uh, you can get these answers. So we will like collect those together. Uh, so we don't even need to read all of those right now. But OK, thank you. These are really good suggestions. Do you have anything you see that's it's like standing? Smaller and smaller. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's... CVs, fixed bugs, um, deprecation, that's a good one. Known issues, future plans. Okay. Not a copy of commit messages. I think we will get to that. Yeah. Later. <laughs> yeah, and actually, so uh, I was looking into uh, the presence of this like um, 
most popular keywords uh, in the change logs uh, at those repositories. And uh, the most popular were definitely the fix, bug uh, feature. Yeah, you can see those percentages. So I think it is quite like makes sense. Um, Okay, so two more technical stuff. So since we are speaking about release notes or change logs, so how often do you release? Yeah, I'm curious with the type of projects we are currently, what we are speaking about. Uh, it might be like also dependent on this release cycle. Maybe some automation might be in place here. Yeah. So, anyone wants to? Anyone misses the hourly? Or we wanted to include that, but yeah, in the end. Or nothing. Just pushes pushing to production. Okay. Uh, okay. So we can probably move on. So this is how it looks. Uh, in days uh, uh, from the data, uh, data we have available, and the median was something around 40, 45, 45 days, so qu quite like a month and a half. Uh, so that's quite interesting that half of people release uh, quicker than a half and a month. So, and the tricky one. How many people are involved in this? It's just one poor person that, uh, that is uh, reserved reserve for this, or is it just the whole team or whole, whole community? Yeah, looks like it's, if it is a bot, then it makes sense, but sadly. Yeah, definitely closer I, to one. I quite like that there are some votes on the very far end, so there, there is some collaboration going on. I like that. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I think you've decided. Uh, yeah, so here you can see that 35% uh, uh, of change, change logs were, are prepared by one person, which is a bit sad, but uh, yeah, so we can probably do something about that. So without further ado, let's move on. Okay, so next one, we have a, which format do you use uh, for your change logs? And I see that there, okay, there are already some responses. So I wanted to mention that uh, Feel free to add anything that comes to your mind when you hear the uh, word format and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and change logs. Uh, so we haven't specified it on purpose because we want to see like what are your associations. Wow. So we can see Markdown is definitely winning, but blog post as well is quite frequent. Text, YAML. PDF, wow. <laughs> Scream it outside, yeah. Just go to the people and... I can see some nice ones that, yeah, we'll get to that. Conventional commits, um, assembly, git tech. <laughs> <laughs> what is meant by git tech? Like, okay. One line per issue, okay. Yeah, lots of interesting Potatoes, <laughs> sounds interesting. <laughs> LaTeX, okay. Wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Confluence. Morse code, wow. <laughs> I think we, I'll be able to go through that, but I think. No. We have a lot to learn, okay. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. These are really more creative than <laughs> I was you. expecting. Uh, so here we have very basic as opposed to the one you provided, uh, but like Markdown is definitely the, the winning format and then some uh, plain files, text files. And the Markdown can actually suggest that uh, this can be the blog, 
blog posts or like the regular files just in the Git repositories. Okay, nice. Um, and as for the formats, like, uh, so there are uh, no standards for the change log files actually, uh, but like uh, different people have definitely different opinions about how the change log file should look like. Um, uh, but if you want to spend some time uh, and read some good materials, uh, then uh, we provided these two, so uh, they are definitely um, worth uh, spending some time on. And uh, you can check some recommendations there. But um, now we have a hopefully more interesting question for you. And uh, that is, uh, what tools do you use to help you with <laughs> change log management? If it any. can be anything, yeah. And if you don't use any, you can write that like nothing or... ChatGPT, nice. <laughs> okay. Different. How about... Yeah. Why not? Coffee, yeah. But nothing is quite, yeah, 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 yeah. popular. <laughs> Pigeons, yeah, it sounds like. Okay, but GitHub and Git in general, GitLab, AI, yeah. That I'm wondering how Vim can be, oh, but yeah. Yeah, we call it two, so yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's there. Nice, nice. My, no, my own blood. I would probably need more details for that, but okay. <laughs> okay, thanks for that. Yeah, uh, and so as for the automation, I think uh, everyone can agree there are a lot of different automation tools and uh, probably if you need some automation, there already is some tool. Uh, but we, here we listed some of the like most popular uh, tools on GitHub, uh, and we just want to emphasize that uh, like it really depends on your needs uh, whether you want to use this tool like um, as as automation uh, on GitHub side or from your command line tool, and most importantly, what should be like the source of the information you want to have in the change log. So if commit is enough for you, and we will get to it, uh, yeah, this, this can be great. Uh, then there are some that uses issues, pull requests, uh, and also it depends on like uh, the ecosystem, the programming language I want to use. So yeah, there are plenty of options. You just have to look for them. Yeah. Speaking of commit, so uh, are you using any uh, commit convention, some prefixes, format, uh, and why we are asking about that, as you've seen on the previous slides, uh, some tools use this as a base for their uh, base. Uh, nice. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. That's also an answer. You did. Okay. Conventional commits. Yeah. That's one of the like, well known semantic versioning. Yeah. Short descriptions. Uh, Screenshot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm wondering how maybe base 64. And <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, follow project guidelines. That, that's, a, that's a good point that depending on the project. 79. Mm. Like charts, maybe? Charts, maybe? <laughs> it's not 42, so it should have some meaning. Uh, ticket and message, yeah. So referencing some issues, some tickets. File out Latin characters, yeah. <laughs> Might be tricky to get something else. I think uh, there are teams that definitely need some emojis into them. Uh, so on, something else. Uh, yeah, nothing is. Uh, okay, so and on the related topic, uh, do you think it makes sense to use this information somewhere? Uh, and, and this is a scale for, for purpose for, because it's maybe not so yes, no, black and white. Uh, there can be something in the middle. So pick what do you think? I 
Okay, nice. Will it return yes or no? What will be the final result? But the no part is, I think, stricter. Like there are some core people that definitely know. It definitely shows it's not a straightforward question and like the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's not black and white. Yeah. Okay, so it's not moving, so I'll move as well. Uh, okay, so we've collected a few things, last couple of questions, so let's share something what we've brought. Uh, we went through this as well. We tried the conventional commits, as you've seen, that, that's like the style of uh, describing various information uh, in the commits. Uh, but we realized that this does not work for us. And I think it's a nice thing to like, think about these things, try various things, and, but then uh, we've realized that uh, for multiple reasons, commits are not the best source for us. And the first thing is that commits are meant or targeted to developers. And this is not our user uh, in our case. So there is this distinction between that. And also, uh, uh, so we uh, brought uh, uh, this idea that we will put the release notes when creating the feature. So the person who works on the feature creates the release notes when uh, the feature is being worked on. So the person won't forget or it's the same person. Uh, so it's not someone else that tries to recall in two weeks what was this change about. So it's the person that is more uh, the most knowledgeable here, Matteo is the, the best guy uh, to provide these release notes. Uh, so we've created this automation that collects these uh, release notes uh, from these PRs because uh, users are more interested in like the whole feature set, uh, uh, so PRs are for us, uh, that does not need to be for you, but for us, uh, it's the level where users might be interested in. Uh, and uh, we have a tool that uh, is allowed to like collect all these release notes, open a pull request with all these collected, uh, and create a PR with the prepared change log for the release. So uh, if you are interested, want to steal the code from us, uh, packet slash prepare release on GitHub is the uh, place to go. Uh, but that's the current state uh, we are in and are quite, quite happy. Uh, but uh, we had some steps, some history involved. So in your teams, think about this. You might use it, you might use something else. Just ma make some de decisions. Yeah, actually, when I'm seeing this slide, uh, we had also a little bit of history with this uh, automation. Because yeah, we are using it for quite some time. Uh, and uh, it is really nice. But yeah, some people on the team tend to re forget that they need to do it. Like in general, we used to forget we are only uh, people. Uh, so now we have a next step automation. Uh, there is also a check on the GitHub CI, like whether there are like attached these release notes. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the last bit that is important uh, that it, it's created by human for human. Yeah, there can be some automation involved to uh, give us some time, but uh, it's created for humans by humans, and I think that that's the important part. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we don't have that many questions uh, for you prepared. We have only two last ones, uh, but I think they will be quite important, so please uh, try to think hard. Uh, also based on the previous questions and answers and the graphs you've seen. Uh, so please uh, try to write down what do you think, what are the, where is the space for improvement uh, in the areas of change work? Yeah. But be aware that we then together need to start working on this, so think about that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> some contradictory. Yeah. Sensible sentences, yeah. Which quality? Artificial intelligence. Should I scroll? Uh, mm -hmm. Looks like it's really contradictory that one can, like, more get, few people can want to get more information and few just don't care about that at all. So it really depends on the project. That's 
one thing. Yeah. It's... Okay. Prepare template. Yeah. Uh, there are few. few uh, I think th that one is quite interesting. With Merek, we were thinking about this this as well. If there can't be uh, standardization, but it's like you know this XKCD comic that yet another standard. So. Uh, we are still aware of this, and yeah, I should scroll. Uh, ah, yeah. Not sure if this is space for improvement or just statement or. Uh, okay. No, Jira. Okay. <laughs> Interesting opinions. Okay, uh, anything uh, that would exist and you would be glad for some tooling, uh, like a specific person role rotation or anything. Okay, looks like. Yeah, but it's very nice. We got 45 responses. We will definitely get back to them. Maybe think about them more. Oh, okay. I don't know how it works. Uh, Maybe just try to go two times. Uh, where is that? Now, oh, it moves. Move. Let's move. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and so many, so many ideas that we, we were allowed to go with. What about now? We already have one response, so is it working for you? Uh, yeah, I'm wondering, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So we should do it again. So I'll return to the first slide and we can do it. And there is a whiteboard, so I think we can squeeze the see it there. Yeah, but we have the last one. And that uh, if you know about some change logs that are worth uh, checking, uh, please share them with us. It can be, a, yes, already some of you provided. Uh, the URLs directly or just projects or Anything. Yeah, but, but ideally, provide a link to the like specific projects you've seen and looked at. Yeah, th this is the change log I've actually read and seen and recall. Maybe so. Yeah, some good something we can uh, get inspired from. I'm too lazy. Probably isn't something that would help us. But yeah, there are few uh, few things. Yeah. Anyone okay, remember system anything? D, system D. Uh, we should mention cockpit. I think they, they do a lot of stuff. Uh, it's it's below. So okay. Home assistant does quite nice blog posts. Valet to do as well. So yeah, there are quite. quite okay. Quite RPM nice auto spec question mark. Django. Yeah, okay, that's good. We are thinking about putting this question in an opposite way. Uh, the change logs you don't like, and we, we were able to collect a lot of good examples. <laughs> but probably better to share the nice things to, to collect some inspiration. Uh, yeah, I was quite skeptical about the question that you will not know so many ones. So we are happy probably about the answers. Okay, so thank you. Uh, that was all that we have prepared for you. Uh, so I think we can jump right into the questions if you still have any, since it was quite interactive already. Worst case, we can convert that to the question to the slides and ask you again the return of the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So the question is whether we also add uh, labels to the PRs uh, from where we generate the change logs. Uh, no, we don't. Yes, we do. 
What? No? Not anymore. I think it changed a bit, and I'm not sure about the current state as well. I don't think so. No, no like uh, if you don't want to provide, like if uh, the PR you created doesn't involve any user facing change, you just write uh, NA to the release description or like not a applicable something uh, like that. We, we used to have a, a, like placeholder.txt that package will uh, provide a coffee for you, and it happened that it resulted in the final blog post. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, not applicable or this, not, not a. Probably better. Okay, any other questions? Yeah? Martin? Okay, so Martin Pitt from Cockpit uh, says he's, uh, they are doing the same in the Cockpit team as we, or like very similar, uh, that, um, yeah, the same automation. And whether we know about any uh, standard, standardized solution or anything. I personally don't know about anything like that, uh, but when I was doing the research for my master thesis, I just uh, uh, noticed there is also some change log enforcer. Uh, but I'm not sure like where was the place that people should add these uh, no so but there is no standard as, as far as I know but maybe front of it. Yeah. And someone Just to uh, recap that, uh, if I get that correctly, uh, the, the person from audience uh, created a bot to, and it, its name is, that would be quicker, sorry. Hi, hi, I'm Svat, my name is Svat. Uh, you were asking about my automation. Well, it's called Chronographer. I originally wrote it for PEEP, but it uh, didn't get integrated into the PEEP project for a while. So I started using it on other uh, things. Uh, it's used in uh, stuff like uh, HTTP and uh, like other projects that I maintain. Uh, so the GitHub app is called Chronographer. It's actually uh, linked as chronographer-psf because I was planning uh, to like pass the maintenance of the thing to the PSF. <laughs> so they had, I would not maintain it, uh, but it's currently running on one of Red Hat's OpenShift clusters actually, uh, like for open source projects. Um, and some people use it, some don't. Like it is specifically designed to facilitate workflows with Towncrier, uh, which is quite popular in the Python ecosystem upstream. There is another similar tool called Reno that is coming from OpenStack. And I know of another tool called Scrive, which is written by the author of coverage.py uh, that works similarly. So, but and enforcing this is not hard. You can even integrate it into GitHub Actions if you want. You don't have to use a, my GitHub app for this. You just need to understand what you want to enforce. And then you have a failing check if the file does not exist. Like. Okay, thank you. Anyone, anything to note, share with anyone? Okay, if not, then thank you very much for attending.